The void of space is silent, a stark, unyielding canvas upon which the saga of humanity is but a fleeting whisper. Where earth once thrived under the gentle caress of the sun, now only debris and memories drift in the cold, dark expanse. Fifty thousand years have passed since the Galactic Council decreed Earth's destruction for its defiance. The planet's vibrant blue and green hues were extinguished in a blaze of fire and desolation, its existence erased from the cosmic ledger as a warning to others. Yet from the ashes of this calamity, the ember of humanity refused to die. Scattered across the stars, in hidden corners of the galaxy, the descendants of Earth's survivors kept the flame of their culture, their memories, and their resilience alive. Isolated colonies on distant moons and planets became bastions of human spirit, each a testament to the tenacity to survive and the unyielding desire for vengeance. The stories of Earth's beauty and the horror of its end were passed down through generations, fueling a collective longing for justice and retribution. Among these colonies, Titan, a moon of Saturn, emerged as a cradle of hope and the epicenter of the human resurgence. Beneath its icy surface, in cavernous habitats shielded from prying eyes, the descendants of Earth's diaspora united under a common cause. They formed the Assembly of Shadows, a covert alliance dedicated to one monumental ambition, to exact revenge against the Galactic Council for the obliteration of Earth. The assembly was a melting pot of scientists, strategists, engineers, and soldiers, each contributing their expertise towards their shared goal. Over centuries, they developed technology that could tip the scales in their favor. A fleet of stealth ships capable of evading the most advanced sensors, weapons that could punch through the Council's defenses, and a network of spies and informants spread across the galaxy. As the final preparations were made, a palpable tension filled the air in Titan's subterranean bases. Each member of the assembly knew the gravity of their undertaking. They were not just fighting for retribution. They were fighting to etch the name of Earth back into the consciousness of the galaxy, to remind every species and every world that humanity, though battered, was not broken. Under the shroud of Titan's eternal night, the first of the stealth ships, ghostly silhouettes against the backdrop of Saturn's luminescent rings, began to depart. Silent as the void itself, they carried with them the hopes and dreams of all humanity. The mission was clear. Dismantle the Galactic Council's grip on the galaxy, strike at the heart of their power, and declare to all that the children of Earth had returned. Titan's hidden moon harbors not just the remnants of humanity, but the seeds of its vengeance. Here, in the concealed depths of underground habitats, the Assembly of Shadows convenes. This clandestine gathering is a diverse assembly of Earth's descendants. Scientists with their intellects honed by survival, engineers whose innovations are forged from necessity, strategists whose plans are as daring as they are desperate, and warriors whose spirits are unbroken by the loss of their ancestral home. The air in the assembly hall is charged with a potent mix of determination and urgency. The walls, lined with screens displaying star maps and technical schematics, flicker in the dim light, casting shadows that dance like specters of the past. At the heart of this assembly stands Captain Sarah Thorne, a figure of resilience, her eyes reflecting the resolve that fuels humanity's quest for retribution. Today we stand on the precipice of a new dawn, Captain Thorne's voice echoes through the chamber, her gaze sweeping over the gathered assembly. The Galactic Council believed they had extinguished the light of humanity. They were wrong. We are the embers that survived, and from these embers we will ignite a blaze that will sweep across the galaxy. The assembly is a mosaic of humanity's potential, each member representing a fragment of Earth's legacy. There are those like Dr. Lena Voss, a geneticist whose work on enhancing human adaptability could be the key to surviving the unknown challenges that lie ahead. There's also Hiro Tanaka, an engineer whose mastery over stealth technology has birthed the fleet that will carry them to their targets undetected. The Assembly of Shadows is not just a military endeavor. It's a symbol of human unity and resilience. It's a collective effort that combines the skills and knowledge of all its members, turning their diversity into their greatest strength.
Their plan is audacious, a multi-phased strategy designed to dismantle the Galactic Council's infrastructure and sow discord among its members. The first phase involves stealth attacks on isolated outposts and supply lines, using the element of surprise to their advantage. These strikes are designed to be swift, leaving no trace of the attackers, only the unmistakable message that the specters of a long-forgotten Earth are not as forgotten as believed. We have among us the finest minds and the bravest souls, Captain Thorne continues, her words rallying the assembly. Our ships are ready, our people prepared. We embark on this journey not just for vengeance, but for justice, for Earth, and for the countless worlds that have suffered under the Council's tyranny. As the meeting concludes, the assembly disperses, each member moving with renewed purpose. In the silent corridors of Titan's underground sanctuaries, there's a sense of unity and resolve. The Ghost Fleet, humanity's silent weapon, is ready. Its ships, like phantoms against the backdrop of space, begin their silent departure from Titan, slipping away into the dark void towards their first targets. The depths of space near Saturn's moon, Titan, where silence reigns supreme, bear witness to a sight unseen for millennia, the birth of humanity's vengeance, the ghost fleet. Under the cloak of darkness, a flotilla of ships, each bearing the emblem of Earth reborn from its ashes, embarks on a journey across the stars. These are no ordinary vessels. They are marvels of human ingenuity and resilience, equipped with advanced stealth technology that renders them nearly invisible to all but the most sophisticated sensors. At the helm of this spectral armada is Captain Sarah Thorne, a figure who has become synonymous with humanity's unyielding spirit. Her ship, the Asterisk Revenant Asterisk, is a masterpiece of engineering, a testament to what can be achieved when a species is driven by the desire for justice. The Asterisk Revenant Asterisk, like its sister ships, is designed for stealth and agility, capable of striking without warning and vanishing before any response can be mounted. The fleet's destination is a series of strategic points across the galaxy, locations identified by the Assembly of Shadows as critical to the Galactic Council's operations. These initial targets are not heavily fortified worlds, but rather supply lines, communication relays, and isolated outposts. Links in the chain of the Council's dominance that, if severed, would sow chaos and confusion. As the Ghost Fleet departs Titan's orbit, a palpable sense of anticipation permeates through each ship. The crews, though aware of the dangers that lie ahead, are driven by a resolve that has been forged in the fires of loss and tempered in the cold expanse of space. They are not just warriors and scientists, they are avatars of Earth's memory, each bearing the legacy of a world that refuses to be forgotten. The first target looms ahead, Zelos IV, a mining colony on the edge of Council territory. It is a linchpin in the supply chain of raw materials essential for the Council's military and infrastructure projects. Striking Zelos IV would not only demonstrate the Ghost Fleet's capabilities, but also send a clear message. The shadows have teeth. Captain Thorne, standing before the Revenant's main viewport, watches as the fleet approaches its target. The plan is clear. A surgical strike disabling the colony's defenses and communication systems before they can raise the alarm. Precision is key. The goal is to cripple, not to annihilate. Humanity seeks justice, not mindless destruction. The operation begins. Ships detach from the main fleet, gliding silently towards their objectives. The element of surprise is complete. The colony's sensors fail to detect the incoming threat until it is too late. In a coordinated ballet of precision and efficiency, the Ghost Fleet executes its attack. Energy pulses light up the darkness of space, targeting key infrastructure and leaving the colony's defenses in ruins. But the Ghost Fleet does not linger. As soon as the attack is completed, the ships disappear into the void, leaving behind a crippled colony and a galaxy that will soon be forced to acknowledge the return of humanity. The message is clear. Earth's children are no longer whispers in the dark. They are a force to be reckoned with, a shadow cast across the stars. Back on the asterisk revenant asterisk, Captain Thorne allows herself a moment of quiet reflection. The success of their first strike brings a mix of relief and sorrow. The path ahead is fraught with danger, 
and the cost of their campaign will be high. But this is a war not just for retribution, but for the right to exist, to remember, and to dream of a future where humanity can once again find its place among the stars. The aftermath of the Ghost Fleet's initial strike against Zelos IV reverberates through the cosmos, a stark declaration that the descendants of Earth are neither extinct nor powerless. As news of the attack spreads like wildfire across the Galactic Council's channels, disbelief and fear take root. A mining colony, albeit a crucial node in the Council's supply chain, had been assaulted with precision and ferocity, leaving its defenses in ruins without a trace of the assailants. Within the command deck of the Asterisk Revenant Asterisk, Captain Sarah Thorne reviews the operation's outcomes with her crew, her expression a mix of satisfaction and somber contemplation. The strike on Zelos IV was a success, but it was merely the opening move in a much larger game of interstellar chess. We've sent our message, Captain Thorne announces to her crew, her voice steady and commanding. But this is just the beginning. The Council will retaliate, and we must be ready. Our next steps will define the future of humanity. The Ghost Fleet's actions have not gone unnoticed. Across the galaxy, species under the Council's dominion begin to whisper of a shadow force capable of defying the might of their oppressors. Some view these rumors with skepticism, while others, oppressed for too long, dare to hope. Back on Zelos IV, the aftermath of the attack sets the stage for the Ghost Fleet's reputation. The colony's survivors speak of ships appearing from nowhere, striking with terrifying efficiency, and then vanishing without a trace. The narrative of ghosts avenging the long-lost planet Earth starts to take hold, inspiring fear among the Council's supporters and hope among its detractors. In the wake of the attack, the Galactic Council convenes an emergency session. The representatives of the Council's member species, from the militant cracks to the technologically advanced Sinar, voice their concerns and outrage. The destruction of Zelos IV is not just a tactical loss, but a symbolic defeat, challenging the Council's authority and invincibility. We cannot allow this affront to go unanswered, declares Ambassador Krell, a high-ranking official of the cracks, his voice a low growl. These ghosts must be hunted down and eradicated. Let the galaxy see the price of defying the Council. The Council's response is swift and merciless. Elite fleets are dispatched to scour the territories adjacent to the attack site, with orders to find and destroy the perpetrators. A bounty is placed on information leading to the ghost fleet, turning pirates, mercenaries, and even desperate civilians into potential hunters. Meanwhile, the ghost fleet, aware of the storm they've stirred, recedes further into the shadows. Captain Thorne, understanding the weight of their next decisions, convenes with her closest advisors to plan their future operations. They must strike a balance between boldness and caution, continuing their campaign without exposing themselves to the Council's wrath prematurely. The Galactic Council, an amalgamation of species that prides itself on maintaining order across the cosmos, finds itself at a crossroads. The attack on Zelos IV was not just a blow to their resources, but a direct challenge to their authority. In the grand chambers of the Council's headquarters, a fortress of diplomacy and power located in the heart of the galaxy, the air is thick with tension and uncertainty. The Grand Hall, usually a place of unity and governance, now buzzes with heightened security and urgent conversations. Representatives of various member species, their appearances as diverse as the worlds they hail from, gather in an emergency assembly to deliberate the appropriate response to the insurgent threat that has emerged seemingly out of the void. Ambassador Krell, still seething from the insult to the Council's might, is among the first to speak. The attack on Zelos IV cannot be dismissed as a mere act of piracy or rebellion. It is a declaration of war, he thunders, his voice echoing off the ornate walls. We must respond with overwhelming force. Let the galaxy see the cost of defiance. However, not all share Krell's enthusiasm for a militaristic approach. Sinar Delegate Silphi, renowned for her species' advanced intelligence and strategic acumen, raises a counterpoint. While I share the sentiment of retribution, we must not act rashly. These attackers, these ghosts, 
possess capabilities that we underestimated. A brute force response may play into their hands. We need a strategy that encompasses military, intelligence, and diplomatic efforts. The Council is divided, but the need for action is undeniable. A multifaceted plan begins to take shape, one that aims to isolate, identify, and eliminate the insurgent threat. The Council's vast intelligence network is mobilized, with spies and informants tasked with uncovering the origins and whereabouts of the Ghost Fleet. Bounty hunters and mercenaries are contracted, turning the galaxy's underworld into a hunting ground for any trace of the insurgents. Simultaneously, the Council's military forces, a formidable fleet that has ensured peace under its terms for centuries, begin a systematic search of the sectors surrounding Zelos IV. The message is clear. Harboring or assisting the insurgents will result in dire consequences. As these plans are set into motion, the Council also seeks to counter the narrative of the Ghost Fleet's attacks. Propaganda campaigns are launched, painting the insurgents as terrorists who threaten the stability and peace of the galaxy. The Council aims to sow doubt and fear among any who might sympathize with the Ghost's cause, attempting to isolate them further. Yet, despite these efforts, the attacks have ignited a spark of hope in oppressed systems. Secret meetings and clandestine communications spread, sharing tales of the Ghost Fleet's audacity. For some, the fear of Council retribution is outweighed by the possibility of change, of throwing off the yoke of oppression that has long stifled their worlds. In the ever-shifting tapestry of galactic politics, the ripples caused by the Ghost Fleet's initial strikes begin to touch distant corners of the cosmos, stirring unrest and inspiring hope in equal measure. Among those who watch the unfolding drama with keen interest are the Tarn, a species known for their resilience and deep-seated resentment towards the Galactic Council's authoritarian rule. The Tarn, with their chitinous exteriors and luminescent eyes, had long chafed under the Council's heavy-handed governance, their once thriving culture stifled by oppressive regulations and punitive measures. The news of a force capable of striking against the Council sparks a daring thought within the Tarn's underground resistance movement, the possibility of an alliance with humanity's descendants. A clandestine meeting is arranged in the neutral territory of the asteroid belt of Thessia, a labyrinth of rock and ice that has long served as a haven for smugglers, outlaws, and those wishing to remain unnoticed. The Ghost Fleet, wary of traps and betrayal, sends a small, highly skilled delegation led by Lieutenant Mara Kincaid, an expert in diplomacy and covert operations. The Tarn delegation is headed by Zareth, a seasoned warrior and strategist who bears the scars of his people's subjugation. The initial moments of the meeting are tense, with both sides measuring the other, aware of the stakes involved. Lieutenant Kincaid, with her calm demeanor and sharp intellect, extends the hand of cooperation, outlining the shared interests and goals between their peoples. We seek to dismantle the Council's stranglehold on the galaxy, Kincaid states, her voice steady and convincing. Together we can amplify our efforts, strike where it hurts them most, and lay the groundwork for a new era of freedom and cooperation among the stars. Zareth, his voice a deep rumble, responds with cautious optimism. The Tarn have long awaited an opportunity to reclaim our destiny from the Council's grasp. Your actions have given us hope, but hope alone is not enough. We need assurances, a demonstration of your commitment and capabilities. The negotiations are intense, with both sides laying out their terms, evaluating risks, and envisioning the shape of this nascent alliance. A plan emerges from these discussions, one that would leverage the Ghost Fleet's stealth and the Tarn's intimate knowledge of a critical council armory located on the planet Hydara. The armory is a linchpin in the council's military supply chain, and its loss would severely cripple their operational capabilities in the sector. The agreement is sealed with a mutual understanding of the challenges ahead and the shared risks of their endeavor. Kincaid and Zareth, representing the hopes of their respective peoples, pledge to stand together against the might of the Council, their alliance a beacon for other oppressed species contemplating resistance. As the meeting concludes and the delegations depart, the space around the Thessia asteroid belt seems to hum with the potential 
of what has been set in motion. The alliance between humanity's descendants and the Tarn marks a significant shift in the galactic resistance against the Council, a union of shadows and resilience poised to challenge the established order. The planet Hydara, a world enveloped in storms and shrouded in secrecy, hosts one of the Galactic Council's most fortified armories. Its importance to the Council's military might is unparalleled, making it a fortress that many believe impregnable. Yet, it is this very place that the newly formed alliance between humanity's descendants and the Tarn targets in a bold move to undermine the Council's grip on the galaxy. Preparations for the siege are meticulous and intense. The Ghost Fleet, augmented by Tarn vessels equipped with heavy armaments and shield technology, converge on a hidden base in the nebula of Kethar. Here, under the cover of gas clouds and electromagnetic storms, a plan of unprecedented audacity is forged. Lieutenant Mara Kincaid, now a symbol of the Alliance's unity, works closely with Zerath to coordinate the attack. The plan relies on the element of surprise, utilizing the Ghost Fleet's stealth capabilities to breach Hydara's outer defenses and disable its sensor arrays. Meanwhile, the Tarn forces, seasoned in guerrilla warfare, are tasked with penetrating the armory's ground defenses to secure critical infrastructure. The challenges are formidable. Hydara's defenses are not just physical, they are bolstered by a network of advanced AI-driven surveillance systems and patrolled by elite Council Guard units. The planet's turbulent atmosphere complicates navigation, threatening to expose the attackers before they can reach their objectives. As the siege begins, the Ghost Fleet emerges from the nebula's shadows, slipping past the outer sensor perimeters with ghost-like precision. Simultaneously, Tarn assault teams, encased in specialized armor to withstand the planet's harsh conditions, begin their descent towards the armory's surface installations. The first clash is violent and swift. The Ghost Fleet engages Hydara's orbital platforms, their advanced weapons systems disabling the platform's shields before they can mount a coordinated defense. Explosions light up the dark skies as the platforms suffer critical damage, creating a window for the ground assault to intensify. On the surface, Zerath leads the Tarn warriors with ferocious determination, cutting through the Council's ground forces with precision strikes and tactical ingenuity. The armory's defenses, though formidable, are not prepared for an enemy already within their midst. Kincaid, coordinating from orbit, provides real-time intelligence and support, ensuring the Tarn forces can advance towards their objective. The battle for Hidara is a maelstrom of chaos and strategy, with each side pushing the other to their limits. The armory, once thought untouchable, begins to falter under the relentless assault of the Alliance. It is a testament to the bravery and resilience of those who fight, a vivid illustration of what can be achieved when disparate beings unite for a common cause. In the final hours of the siege, as the last of the armory's defenses are overwhelmed, a sense of triumph mixed with exhaustion permeates the Alliance's ranks. Hydara, the impregnable fortress, has fallen its stores of weapons and supplies now in the hands of those who dare to challenge the Council. The victory at Hydara is a turning point in the galactic struggle against the Council's tyranny. It sends shockwaves through the galaxy, emboldening other oppressed species to consider the possibility of resistance. For the Ghost Fleet and the Tarn, it is a powerful affirmation of their alliance's strength and a signal that the battle for the galaxy's future is only just beginning. In the aftermath of the Siege of Hydara, the Galactic Council reels from the unexpected and audacious blow dealt by the Alliance of Humanity's descendants and the Tarn. This victory, while a significant morale booster for the insurgents, also serves as a stark reminder of the Council's vulnerabilities. In response, the Council intensifies its efforts, not just on the battlefield, but in the realm of espionage and counterintelligence. The war against the Ghost Fleet and its allies enters a new shadowy phase. The Council, recognizing the need for a more subtle approach, enlists the services of the Varel, a species renowned across the galaxy for their espionage skills and ability to gather intelligence undetected. With their serpentine bodies and chameleon-like skin that allows them to blend into almost any environment, the Varel are the embodiment of stealth and secrecy. Their mission is clear infiltrate the ranks of the Ghost Fleet and the Tarn Resistance, uncover their plans, and sabotage their operations from within.
Meanwhile, the Alliance, aware that their success has made them a target for infiltration, tightens security measures and counter-surveillance protocols. Lieutenant Mara Kincaid, alongside Zareth, spearheads these efforts, knowing that the war's outcome could hinge on their ability to detect and neutralize spies within their ranks. As the Varel agents begin their work, a series of mysterious incidents unfold across the Alliance's bases and ships. Crucial supply shipments go missing, communications are inexplicably intercepted, and strategic plans seem to be anticipated and countered by the Council's forces with alarming precision. Paranoia starts to seep into the Alliance, eroding trust and cohesion. Kincaid and Zarath, determined to root out the cause of these betrayals, enlist the help of an unlikely ally, a defected Council codebreaker named Elian. With his intimate knowledge of the Council's intelligence operations, Elian helps them devise a trap to expose the virile spies. The plan is risky, involving the dissemination of false information about a supposed vulnerable target, hoping to lure the Council into a costly mistake. The trap is set, and the Alliance waits with bated breath. As expected, the Council takes the bait, launching a significant assault on a seemingly critical but ultimately insignificant installation. The real target, however, is the Varel agents who reveal themselves in their haste to communicate the success of their deception back to their handlers. The counter-ambush is swift and merciless. Several Varel spies are captured, and through a combination of interrogation and Elian's expertise, the Alliance begins to unravel the network of espionage that has infiltrated their ranks. The victory is a crucial one, not just in terms of the immediate tactical advantages, but also in sending a clear message to the Council. The Alliance is resilient, adaptable, and not easily undone by treachery. As the galaxy watches, the dynamic of the conflict begins to shift. The Alliance's successful counter-espionage efforts, coupled with their decisive victory at Hydara, have tipped the scales in their favor. Emboldened species across the cosmos, previously subdued by fear of the Galactic Council's retribution, now entertain the notion of resistance. The Ghost Fleet and its allies have transformed from a mere nuisance into a beacon of hope for those oppressed by the Council's rule. Lieutenant Mara Kincaid, now a celebrated strategist within the Alliance, identifies an opportunity to exploit the growing dissent within the Council's territories. Together with Zareth and the newly integrated intelligence team, including the defector Elian, they concoct a bold plan to further destabilize the Council's grasp on the galaxy. The plan involves a series of coordinated strikes on critical yet vulnerable Council assets, not through brute force, but through subterfuge and precision. The targets are carefully chosen to avoid civilian casualties, aiming instead to disrupt the Council's military and economic infrastructure. The objective is clear. Erode the Council's ability to govern and protect, thereby nurturing the seeds of rebellion among its subjects. Simultaneously, the Alliance initiates a galaxy-wide information campaign. Utilizing the Council's own communication channels, hijacked by Elian's expertise, they broadcast the truth about the Council's tyranny, the potential for freedom, and the victories already won against the seemingly invincible foe. The message resonates with countless beings who have suffered under the Council's dominion, sparking protests, strikes, and in some cases, armed uprisings. One of the most pivotal moments in this campaign occurs on the planet Silor, a major hub for the Council's supply lines. The Ghost Fleet, employing their now signature stealth tactics, delivers a crippling blow to the planet's orbital docks, severing a vital artery in the Council's logistics network. Meanwhile, the Tarn forces land covert operatives to support the planet's nascent resistance movement, providing them with arms and training. As news of Silor's uprising spreads, similar movements begin to emerge across the galaxy. The Council, stretched thin and facing unrest on multiple fronts, struggles to maintain control. Its response, increasingly desperate and brutal, only serves to further alienate its subjects, hastening its decline. Within the Alliance, the mood is cautiously optimistic. Kincaid, Zarath, and their comrades understand that they are at a turning point. Victory once a distant dream, now appears within reach, but they also recognize the dangers of overextension and complacency.
The Council, despite its current disarray, remains a formidable adversary with deep reserves of strength. The uprising against the Galactic Council has reached a fever pitch. The successful liberation of Varex III and the spreading wave of rebellion across the galaxy have emboldened the Alliance, now seen as the harbingers of a new era. However, Lieutenant Mara Kincaid and the leadership of the Alliance are acutely aware that the final and most formidable challenge lies ahead. Taking the battle to the Council's core worlds, the very heart of its dominion. These worlds, heavily fortified and loyal to the Council, represent the ultimate test of the Alliance's resolve and capabilities. The strategy for engaging these bastions of Council power involves not just military might, but also the leveraging of the growing unrest among the populations subjected to the Council's rule. The plan is twofold. Weaken the Council's forces through strategic strikes and inspire uprisings within the core worlds themselves. The first target is Alfara, a planet known for its shipyards that produce a significant portion of the Council's fleet. A direct assault would be costly and could result in heavy casualties. Instead, Kincaid devises a plan that combines stealth, sabotage, and psychological warfare. The Ghost Fleet, employing its advanced cloaking technology, slips past Alfara's defenses to deploy teams of saboteurs. Their mission, to cripple the shipyards and sow chaos among the planet's defense forces. Simultaneously, broadcasts featuring footage of the uprisings on other worlds, along with messages of hope from Kincaid and Zarath, flood the planet's communication networks. The message is clear. The reign of the Council can end, and the people of Alfara have the power to claim their freedom. The operation is a resounding success. The shipyards are incapacitated, significantly impacting the Council's ability to reinforce its fleets. More importantly, the seeds of rebellion take root on Alfara. Discontented factions within the population, inspired by the Alliance's victories and the promise of freedom, begin to rise up, engaging the planet's security forces in open conflict. Emboldened by the success on Alfara, the Alliance sets its sights on the next core world, Belgora, a financial hub that manages the wealth of the Council's elite. Here, the strategy involves crippling the planet's economy by disrupting its banking networks and freeing financial assets seized by the Council. Specialized hacker teams, led by the defector Elian, infiltrate the planet's data centers, executing one of the largest financial cyber operations in galactic history. The fallout is immediate and devastating for the Council. Without access to their funds, military procurements stall, and mercenaries hired by the Council begin to defect or withdraw. The economic destabilization also fuels further unrest on Belgora and beyond, as citizens who have suffered under the Council's economic policies see an opportunity for change. The Alliance's victories on Alfara and Belgora serve as a beacon to oppressed peoples across the galaxy. The battle for the core worlds is not just a military campaign, but a revolution, a galactic shift towards freedom and self-determination. The campaign against the Galactic Council reaches its zenith as the Alliance prepares for an assault on the Council's capital world, a planet that has never been breached, surrounded by layers of defense, and a fleet that has quashed every rebellion for centuries. This world, the epitome of the Council's might and arrogance, stands as the final barrier to the galaxy's freedom. Lieutenant Mara Kincaid, alongside her allies and the leaders of the rebellion, knows that success hinges not only on military might, but on the unity and resolve of all who stand against the Council. The strategy for assaulting the capital is multifaceted. Kincaid and Zareth plan a series of feints and diversions across Council-held territories, spreading thin the capital's formidable defenses. Meanwhile, the heart of the Alliance's forces, including the Ghost Fleet and Tarn Warriors, along with units from newly liberated worlds, amass for a direct assault. The element of surprise is crucial. The capital's sensors and defense networks are the most sophisticated in the galaxy, capable of detecting an attack from light years away. As the Alliance's forces approach, the capital world appears calm, almost serene, its cities shining like jewels against the planet's surface. But beneath this veneer of tranquility, the Council's leaders scramble to respond to the threat that has suddenly materialized at their doorstep. 
The Alliance's diversions have worked, leaving the capital's defenders uncertain of where the true attack will come from. The battle begins with a daring maneuver by the Ghost Fleet, which uses its stealth technology to penetrate the capital's outer defenses and launch a series of strikes against key military installations. These initial attacks are not intended to inflict heavy damage, but to sow confusion and disrupt the planet's defensive coordination. Simultaneously, a massive broadcast, spearheaded by Elian and his team, hijacks the capital's communication networks. Kincaid addresses the galaxy, her message not one of conquest, but of liberation. She calls upon the citizens of the capital to stand down, to recognize the Council's tyranny for what it is, and to join the galaxy in forging a new path forward. The broadcast is a gamble, but it pays off. Reports begin to emerge of defections within the Council's forces, of citizens taking to the streets in support of the Alliance. The ground assault is led by the Tarn, who, with their fearsome combat prowess and knowledge gained from centuries of resistance, breach the capital's defenses. They are joined by units from other species, each fighting not just for the liberation of the galaxy, but for their own world's freedom from the Council's yoke. The battle for the capital is fierce, with heavy casualties on both sides. The Council's elite forces, loyal to the end, mount a desperate defense. But the tide is against them. The Alliance's momentum is unstoppable, fueled by the righteous fury of a galaxy that has suffered too long. In the heart of the capital, Kincaid and her allies confront the leaders of the Galactic Council. The confrontation is tense, with the fate of the galaxy hanging in the balance. But the Council, facing the combined might of the Alliance and the revolts from within its own ranks, has no choice but to capitulate. With the fall of the Galactic Council's capital and the liberation of the Core Worlds, the galaxy finds itself at a crossroads. The oppressive regime that once held sway over countless species has been dismantled, but in its wake lies a landscape scarred by conflict and turmoil. Lieutenant Mara Kincaid, alongside her allies and the leaders of the rebellion, now faces the daunting task of rebuilding from the ruins of war. The Alliance transitions from a military force to a governing body, tasked with restoring stability and order to the galaxy. Kincaid, drawing upon her experiences as a leader and strategist, helps to establish a provisional government composed of representatives from liberated worlds and former council territories. Their mandate is clear, to foster unity, promote reconciliation, and chart a course towards a future where freedom and justice prevail. Rebuilding efforts are focused on the core worlds first, where the devastation wrought by the final battles against the council's forces is most acute. Humanitarian aid pours in from liberated systems, providing food, shelter, and medical care to those affected by the conflict. The Alliance's engineers and scientists work tirelessly to repair critical infrastructure and restore essential services, laying the groundwork for long-term recovery. But the challenges extend far beyond the core worlds. Across the galaxy, worlds once under Council control must now navigate the uncertain waters of newfound freedom. Kincaid and her allies embark on diplomatic missions to these worlds, offering support and guidance as they transition to self-governance. The goal is to foster democratic institutions, empower local leaders, and ensure that the mistakes of the past are not repeated. Meanwhile, the Alliance must contend with the remnants of the Council's forces, scattered and disorganized but still capable of causing havoc. Kincaid leads efforts to demilitarize and disarm these factions offering them the opportunity to lay down their arms and join the rebuilding process. For some, the transition is smooth, but for others, old loyalties die hard, leading to pockets of resistance that must be dealt with swiftly and decisively. Amidst the chaos of reconstruction, stories of heroism and sacrifice emerge, inspiring a galaxy still reeling from the trauma of war. Kincaid and her comrades become symbols of hope, revered by those who see in them the promise of a better future. But for Kincaid, the true heroes are the countless beings who, in their own small ways, contribute to the healing of their worlds and the forging of a new galactic order.
As the galaxy begins to heal from the wounds of war and the oppressive grip of the Galactic Council fades into memory, Lieutenant Mara Kincaid finds herself grappling with shadows from her own past. Despite the victories won and the hope restored, there are lingering questions that demand answers, truths buried beneath the rubble of conflict that refuse to remain hidden. One such shadow emerges in the form of a cryptic message intercepted by the Alliance's intelligence network. A fragment of data, seemingly insignificant at first glance, hints at a dark secret buried deep within the annals of the Council's archives. Kincaid, driven by a sense of duty and curiosity, embarks on a covert mission to uncover the truth, accompanied by a select team of trusted allies. Their journey takes them to the ruins of the Council's former headquarters, a sprawling complex now abandoned and overgrown with vegetation. Here, amidst the wreckage of a fallen regime, Kincaid and her team unearth clues that lead them down a labyrinthine path of deception and betrayal. The trail ultimately leads them to a remote research facility hidden on the fringes of the galaxy, a place shrouded in secrecy and guarded by automated defenses. As they infiltrate the facility, they discover the truth that has lain dormant for millennia a clandestine project initiated by the Council in its dying days, aimed at altering the very fabric of reality itself. The implications of this discovery are staggering. The Council, in its desperation to maintain control, had delved into forbidden sciences, tampering with forces beyond comprehension. What they uncovered was a power that could reshape galaxies, bend time and space to their will. And though the project was abandoned before it could reach its fruition, the seeds of its potential remain, waiting to be awakened by those who would seek to wield its terrible might. Kincaid realizes that the knowledge they possess could tip the delicate balance of power in the galaxy once more. The Alliance, still fragile in its infancy, may not be ready to confront such a threat. But to ignore it would be to invite disaster. With resolve born of duty, and a commitment to safeguarding the freedom so dearly won, Kincaid vows to confront this shadow of the past head-on, to ensure that the galaxy's future remains bright and untainted by the sins of those who came before. Lieutenant Mara Kincaid's quest to uncover the truth behind the Council's clandestine project leads her on a journey to the far reaches of the galaxy, where ancient secrets lie dormant among the stars. Guided by fragments of cryptic data, and the whispers of long-forgotten civilizations, Kincaid and her team embark on a perilous odyssey through uncharted territory. Their first stop is the planet Uria, a world steeped in myth and legend, rumored to be the resting place of an ancient civilization that predates even the Council itself. As they traverse Uria's rugged terrain, they encounter relics of a bygone era, crumbling ruins adorned with strange symbols, towering monoliths etched with enigmatic glyphs. Among the ruins, Kincaid discovers a hidden chamber, its entrance concealed by millennia of erosion and neglect. Inside, she finds a trove of artifacts, artifacts that speak of a time when the galaxy was young and teeming with life. Among these artifacts is a holographic projection, a message from the ancient inhabitants of Aria, warning of a great cataclysm that threatened to consume all life in the galaxy. The message speaks of a weapon, a weapon of unimaginable power, created by the ancient civilization as a last resort to stave off the encroaching darkness. But the weapon proved too dangerous, too uncontrollable, and in the end, it was sealed away, hidden from sight in the hopes that it would never be unleashed upon the galaxy. Kincaid realizes with a sinking heart that the Council's project was an attempt to rediscover this ancient weapon to harness its power for their own nefarious purposes. But the echoes of the past serve as a warning. The weapon, if awakened, could bring about untold destruction, plunging the galaxy into chaos once more. Determined to prevent history from repeating itself, Kincaid and her team set out to locate the weapon before it falls into the wrong hands. Their journey takes them to the edge of known space, to the ruins of a long-forgotten outpost, nestled amidst the swirling mists of a nebula. Here, they confront the final guardians of the ancient weapon, guardians tasked with ensuring that it remains forever sealed away. 
In a desperate battle against forces beyond their comprehension, Kincaid and her team fight for the fate of the galaxy itself. In the end, it is not brute force but cunning and determination that carry the day. Kincaid, drawing upon her ingenuity and leadership, devises a plan to disable the weapon's safeguards and render it inert once more. With a final defiant act, she seals the weapon away, burying it beneath the sands of time where it will remain hidden from prying eyes. With the ancient weapon sealed away and the shadows of the past laid to rest, Lieutenant Mara Kincaid returns to the heart of the Alliance, where the galaxy stands on the precipice of a new dawn. The revelations of their journey have deepened the bond among Kincaid and her allies, strengthening their resolve to safeguard the freedoms they have fought so hard to win. As they return to the core worlds, they find a galaxy in the midst of transformation. Rebuilding efforts are well underway, and the scars of war are slowly being healed. But the true measure of their success lies not in the reconstruction of cities and infrastructure, but in the forging of a new galactic order founded on principles of justice, equality, and cooperation. Kincaid, alongside the leaders of the Alliance, works tirelessly to establish institutions that will ensure the galaxy's long-term stability and prosperity. Democratic councils are formed on liberated worlds, giving voice to the diverse voices of their populations. Trade agreements and treaties are negotiated, fostering economic cooperation and mutual benefit among former enemies, but the work is far from over. Lingering tensions and resentments from the war threaten to undermine the fragile peace that has been achieved. Kincaid understands that lasting peace requires more than just the absence of conflict. It requires reconciliation and forgiveness, a willingness to let go of past grievances and embrace a shared future. To this end, Kincaid launches initiatives aimed at fostering understanding and cooperation among species that have long been divided by mistrust and prejudice. Cultural exchanges, educational programs, and joint ventures in science and exploration bring beings from across the galaxy together, forging bonds of friendship and solidarity that transcend old enmities. One of the most significant achievements of this period is the establishment of the Galactic Accord, a binding treaty that enshrines the principles of peace, freedom, and cooperation as the foundation of galactic governance. Signed by representatives from every corner of the galaxy, the Accord heralds a new era of unity and collaboration, where the galaxy's many peoples work together for the common good. But even as the ink dries on the final pages of the Accord, Kincaid knows that the work of building a better galaxy is never truly finished. Challenges will arise, conflicts will flare, but as long as beings like her continue to stand up for what is right, the galaxy will always have hope. And so, with a sense of optimism and purpose, Kincaid looks towards the horizon, ready to face whatever the future may bring.